the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we praise and thank you for this day, and we ask you to impart your blessing upon us, upon this time that we are uh, in, engaged in this in, in this show, in this interview, and we ask you all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hello mga ka -faith. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Today is the day that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice, be glad in it because I'm so excited again to this uh, renowned exorcist in America. He will share with us a very important and vital information. And I know he will uh, catechize us on our Catholic faith. And most especially in our concern, especially in the topic of a spiritual warfare. Without further ado, I will uh, introduce again our guest for today. Um, Father Carlos Martin is a leading exorcist of the Catholic Church. Throughout his two decades of ministry and service, he has helped set people free all over the world. Father Mar Martins also leads Treasure of the Church, a ministry of evangelization of the Catholic Church, helping people experience God through encounter with relics. And he is also the host of the very popular pod podcast, The Exorcist File. So please all welcome Father Carlos Martins. Hello, Adrian. Good to be here. Hello, Father Carlos. Thank you so much for uh, saying yes again uh, to this interview. Certainly. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, Father, uh, can you greet our uh, viewers from the Philippines, if you may? Sure, yeah. So hello to everybody and may God be with you, with your families, and with all those whom you love. Amen. And Father, uh, can you give us a, a, a brief background about yourself for the sake of those people who will see you for the first time? Yeah, certainly. So uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a priest with a religious community called the Companions of the Cross. I've served as an exorcist for the, the better part of 20 years. And I've in that in doing that ministry, which which I've yes. done in in North America and in Europe, uh, I've seen many cases. And the podcast that I do called The Exorcist Files, and it uh, it's available at exorcistfiles.tv. Mm. Uh, and uh, so my cases that I discuss in the podcast all came from the the my functioning as an exorcist uh, in these in these twenty years or so. Wow. Yeah, uh, actually, I listened to all the uh, case on that podcast. It was amazing. And we also learned about our Catholic faith. So, Father, um, on the, our last interview, some of the viewers have a question uh, about our, our interview and about your recent podcast. So, I will uh, flash the screen, the first question, Father. For sure. one of our viewers from Laurie Wagner, uh, my stepdad uh, brother messed around in the occult when he was in his late teens and ended up tormented by demons the rest of his life. He literally went crazy, spent rest of his life in and out of institutions, and no one would believe him. I just pray that God took him to heaven when he passed. What can you say about this, Father? Yeah. So, so that that certainly can be the case that you know that the the enemy uh, is looking to form a relationship with us and when we dabble into the occult we're we're reaching we're putting our hands so to speak down 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 a hole and mm -hmm. whatever is down there we can't control it, it might be we might do so and and get nothing nothing happens as a result of it or we might do so and we get a horrific demon who now is is very difficult to get out and you know mm -hmm. the process of exorcism is not magic it's it's it, the demon is expelled if and only if god desires it and mm -hmm. and sometimes he allows us to suffer with the demon our whole life so so that's that's one thing the, the other thing is the fact that one only goes to hell 
right? God forbid, at the end of one's life, if one dies in the state of mortal sin. So one can be possessed and not in a state of mortal sin. Mortal sin can lead to possession. In the state of possession, someone can go to confession and repent of the sin, and yet the demon remains for whatever God's purpose, and such that at the end of, of one's life, the possessed person may still go to heaven. So the fact that someone has a demon does not mean that they're automatically condemned to hell. One only goes to hell if one has mortal sin. So, so those two things are completely disconnected, right? The, the fact that one has demons uh, does not mean that that condemnation is inevitable, not at all. Mm. So is it like the case of Annalise Michel? You know, um, you could say that. So Annalise Michel's case is, is unique. So th she was possessed and the, uh, you know, I've read, the, I've read the various interviews of pe the people mm. that were involved. I've read transcripts of, of the case mm. and I've heard some of the recordings that were produced oh. and most of the exorcism sessions were recorded uh, that is no longer permitted anymore but back in her time it was not forbidden so it was done mm. the demons would say at least towards the end of the case in the final year or so that they no longer wanted to be in her but they were not permitted to leave that god was was forcing them to remain behind Uh, so there was a salvific purpose mm. in the case of her possession. And what she would say about it coincided with that, where mm. she was offering up the possession and her suffering that came of it for the salvation of souls. Oh, so she is a victim soul. A victim soul. Yeah. yeah. Now, how she got the possession... Mm. Uh, what it appears that happened, which none of the movies, I think, have really nailed it, mm. was it appears that there was a curse put on her by, um, well, while she was in utero, in her mother's womb, there was a woman who was jealous of her mother and it evidently put a curse on her. So this was talked about in the village, but the demons mentioned it repeatedly that they had rights based on that curse. So that was the entry point. Nevertheless, God had his own purposes for it. He used it to accomplish his own ends. I see. I think I heard this right, that Annalise Michel is a devout Catholic. Oh, yes. Very devout. Yes. And in fact, um, you know, she, she of course died. And that's very unusual for someone to die during a possession. Mm. Uh, but in fairness... Uh, the demons had predicted, and she claimed to also have a revelation from the Lord that she yeah. would be free in July of, 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 of that year, which I believe the year was 1977. So the demons would testify to it, and she also received her own revelation, which she shared with her family members and friends. And sure enough, on July the 1st, 1977... Uh, her she was liberated because she was found dead in the morning in her bed. Uh, mm. So she had predicted that in July she'd be free, and indeed she was because she was now deceased. That's really unusual. Is it the case that the demons caused the death? I don't believe it's the case because I've never seen it. I've never heard about it. Mm. Uh, I think that that God had His own separate purposes for her as a victim soul. And the proof of it is what the Holy Spirit is doing following her death. So her tomb, her grave uh, at the cemetery is a place of pilgrimage. There are busloads of pilgrims that come oh. and they pray at her grave. So, so wow. I think that that's already kind of a proof that, that the Holy Spirit is, is, is holding her up as a witness. Is it possible that she will be canonized soon as a saint? <laughs> it, it is certainly it is possible uh, is there a cause for her beatification yeah. underway I, I'm not aware I'm not, I'm not aware of a cause but in order to begin a cause what is happening there at her grave 
must be happening. So in other words, there has to be what the church calls a fama sanctitatis, a reputation of sanctity that is proven by a devotion to the individual after death. And that's certainly happening in her case. Wow. I heard it for the first time, Father Carlos. <laughs> sure. Uh, Father, uh, speaking of when someone will put you curse, some people ask if every time they will listen to the Exorcist File podcast, is it necessary to pray for protection before listening and do cleansing after they listen? You know, I, I don't think it's necessary. It's always a good thing. But look, there's not going to be any demons that come at you through the podcast. <laughs> Right, so so there's no demons coming at you from me, or from the other persons in the podcast. So, you know that that's just not the case. So you can pray for protection always. Mm -hmm. I would never say no to that, but it's not necessary. Now, mm -hmm. it's just like somebody sometimes someone has a demon, yeah, already has a relationship with a demon. Let's say, and they go into church for mass. And they start manifesting during the mass, right? Mm. In other words, that there, there's a there's a demonic agitation that they're under, and they exhibit the symptoms of someone who is under a spiritual oppression. It mm. is not the mass that caused that; it's the relationship the person had with the demon. However, because the person is at mass, the demon feels the pain of the mass, and the demon exerts his agitation. Yeah, so there's no demons that would come from mass. Now, one of the things too that that I often encounter is the fact. So, when someone asks me to go and say get demons out of their home or to pray over them and and get, mm. and, and get rid of their demons, I want to ensure before I do anything that they're ready to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Because if they're not, then then. It's dangerous for them if I remove their demons because they there's a false sense of security and they still have that door open to the demons so that the demons are expelled, but they will come back with seven demons more powerful than themselves, such mm. that the second state of the person is worse than the first. And this is straight out of the scriptures. So... If I go there and do something without first pastorally helping them to come into a newer and deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, they're going to turn around and say, hey, you know what? I had that priest, Father Martin's come here, and he made things worse. Well, it's not that I made things worse, mm. but the fact that they didn't give their heart and their souls to Jesus Christ, that is what made things worse. Ah. Uh, Father... Because my friend just uh, recently he he chatted me that he performed deliverance prayer in their in their home, mm -hmm. but his mother always play uh, the Shiba the song in YouTube. You will uh, find it uh, about Shiba meditation song something like that. Father, okay. So my friend also he saw an entity in in their house. My question is if he has the authority to perform deliverance to their home well is he a christian yeah he's a catholic he's a catholic then mm -hmm. he absolutely has the authority and it's his own home of to his parents his, of his parents okay mm. so so he he has authority to an extent and and i don't know fully what extent it is but his mother also has the right to be syncretistic in her religious views. She has the right to, to have her loyalty split and not give her heart totally to Jesus Christ, to give part of it to Buddha or part of it to this, mm. part of it to that. So um, if she has chosen that, he cannot overrule it. Oh now, my. But, but his, his prayer will have some effect and maybe it will be exactly what is needed Uh, so you don't really know until he does it, which he did. And you see the effect. You know, how did God react? What did God do in response to the prayer? That would be the question. So since he did that prayer, is the house clean? He just performed it, uh, I think, yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> okay. All right. So, well, you know, that remains to be seen. But do we have authority in our own homes? Absolutely, we do. Absolutely. Oh, But even... Even if 
it's from his parent? Um, in our own home, we do. Uh, if it's in his <laughs> parents' home, then there's an overlapping authority, and it's not as clean and clear in that case. But we do have authority by virtue of our baptism yeah. to cast out demons. We we have that authority. Uh, now, I would not recommend. I, I I emphasize that again. Do not go out and start casting demons from places where you have no business, uh, because uh, what's going to happen is they're going to come after you. But within your own home, within your own dwelling, within your own personal family members, those whom over whom you have authority, your children and so forth, yes, your spouse, yes. Uh, now, one further qualification of that. In order to have that authority, you need to belong to Christ. Mm. So that means you need to be living your life in congruence to him. You, you need to be living a good, faithful, moral life. If you're not, if you, you know, you have sins on the side. So, well, you know, I go visit a prostitute on Tuesdays. I go, I commit this world to have an internet mm. porn that I indulge in uh, every day. I have files on my computer. I have it. You don't belong to Christ. And so if you, you, in fact, who you belong to is the devil. And if you come after the devil with the authority of Christ, while you belong to the devil, he's going to come after you hard. Because, in fact, he is your master. And if you come against your master, he's going to come against you in an extraordinary way. So so there is a danger, always a danger, if you don't belong to Christ and you start wielding Christ's authority. Because what you're doing is, is, is exerting a lie. You are proclaiming a lie. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're trying to use the authority of Christ when you, in fact, are continually through your moral life, putting him on the cross. Mm. You're, you're trying to steal from Christ is, is another way of phrasing it. I see, Father. My next question, Father, in case uh, number three in the Exorcist Files podcast, uh, the two friends just, just did is to go to confession and, bur and burn the Ouija board. Yep. So, Father Carlos... Is it already okay even, even if they don't de do deliverance? Well, they did. There was a deliverance oh. uh, in the sense of they, they all went, well, not all of them, but the ones who burned the board, they went to confession. You know, so there was already that at that moment, there was a severing of the relationship between them and the demon. Mm -hmm. um, so the, that severance freed them from from the demon's power the demon was still at some level attached to them but that attachment broke as soon as they burned that board so that that board being the means of the vehicle of the relationship the demon had with them when they burned it they definitively ended the relationship but his power over them was already eviscerated through the confession a good thing it didn't go into possession yes absolutely yeah it, they had some terrible vexations uh, mm. physical attacks even of, of uh, by the devil uh, attacks also in their dreams so there was already there, there was already obsession uh, there uh, so the, the the demon was 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 a difficult one was mm. a powerful one yeah. let's say and Uh, it didn't take long for him to exert that power in their lives. What's interesting is some of the feedback that I got yeah. about that podcast, um, among the feedback, there was one person who, who said that she and her friends also played with a Ouija board mm. and they also made contact with an entity and it had the same name, Stevie. Wow. And uh, she described very similar phenomena. Um, so, so you know, so this is this is a demon. This is a, a beast out there, so to speak, swimming around, looking for an opportunity to come out uh, from where it is and 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 to harass people. Father, I'm curious. The trap that showed them is it a demonic uh, entity? Absolutely, it is. Yes. Oh. Absolutely, it's not. It's not a deceased human soul, like yeah, like, like he was saying it is. This was demonic. So, why do you think Father 
the truck showed while they're they are burning the Ouija board? I I think it was a final manifestation that the Lord allowed for them to see, so that they could understand the extent of the danger that they were in. That oh. there was a powerful demon, and this demon was allowed to demonstrate his anger at them severing that relationship. So. So that anger manifested itself in that apparition, in that vision. So wow. it, it was a it was a good. They they got rid of the demon just in time because my my sense from it uh, is that it was going to become much worse very quickly if they hadn't taken that that action of burning the board. Why is the word no? It's, it's not burning while they are burning the Ouija board. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's that's a supernatural manifestation of of the demon stating he doesn't want to end the relationship. So, but nevertheless, they keep burning it. They keep adding sticks yeah. onto the fire, and they, they keep it. putting fluid on mm. on the word no, which is a, so the entire board burned except that word no. Yeah. They keep doing that, and every time they do so. That's a further severing of their relationship with the demon. They're they're saying they're exercising their right and saying no, uh, so that the demon wants the relationship to continue, but they want it to end. And so finally, at a certain point, uh, it was done. It was completed. The Lord ratified it, and and the demon, the the fact that the demon was allowed to frighten them when he came by in the truck, but the truck kept driving by. That's a sign that he no longer has any relationship with them, and none of the ones, not none of them that I know with whom I've, been, I've, I've, I know four out of the six, but only three out of the, uh, three out of the six remained converted. Um, oh. One of them uh, partly converted, partly did not. His life was not great, but the two that did not convert. Their their oh. lives, their lives became their lives became in a word horrible, highly problematic with in, in virtually every part. For the sake of our viewers that also play this uh, Ouija board, but they are not aware of the danger of this game, so uh, they must go to confession right away. Absolutely, get rid of the board, get rid of mm -hmm. it. Burn it, destroy it. Don't just pass it on to someone, but get rid of it. Get rid of everything that the devil has given you. Maybe he is, maybe he's given you some kind of charm or some object. Mm. Get rid of it, destroy it, and any kind of any other way in which he's established a relationship with you. Maybe you you picked up a book. Uh, from, mm. from from that contains spells, perhaps, or yeah. some kind of crystal. Get rid of it. Destroy those things. Go to confession and make a thorough confession and, and give your life to Christ. Ask Mother Mary to come in and complete your prayer and remove all the, the demons, all of the snakes, the spiritual snakes from your life and give your life to Jesus Christ and get rid of those things because uh, they are incompatible with the life of a Christian and in having those you, you you are giving the devil permission to be part of you mm. how about father if they play it 10 years ago or decade I mean years ago sure I well so if it's not been confessed then you have to confess it sins don't go away through the passage of time mm. sins go away by being submerged in the blood of Christ mm. but also aside from the sin mm. those actions forged a relationship with the devil so that relationship is still there legally it's still there oh. going to confession and rejecting it you you sever that relationship you end it you bring about an end to it you see the the devil can you know it's just like a contract a, a contract because it's 30 years old it doesn't mean it's not operative anymore yeah so the 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 devil 
retains those rights as long as that contract exists. So you, you need to get rid of the contract by going to confession. Thank you so much for the, for the information, Father. It's and really from uh, David, did I understand this right? The demons has to have authority from God to enable you to be tormented? If so, why does God do this and allow this? I find this most interesting. Yeah, sure. So the, the devil has to have God's permission to do anything. And if you look in the Bible, in the book of Job, there's twice in that book, in the early chapters, where it states that the devil presented himself into heaven and dialogued with God. And, and he asked for permission to afflict Job. Twice mm. he did that. Yeah. And both times God permitted it. So, so the answer is yes, absolutely. The devil requires God's permission to do anything. Mm -hmm. The devil is on a leash and God is holding that leash. Yeah. And he only permits the devil to act within the length of that leash. Mm -hmm. Why does God do that? Well, because in order to bring forth greater good. The, the, the salvific action of Jesus Christ was not cheap. It yeah. cost the Son of God his life. And why does God permit people to be tormented? Well, sometimes they need to be tormented, uh, or, or others need to see people tormented in order to live a proper and converted life. And so mm -hmm. demonic affliction serves God's purpose in this regard. Mm. So there's nothing more funny than the priest who, who on one hand praises the development of technology, but on the other refuses to provide video and audio evidence that can be easily obtained with such technology to prove his claim about supernatural manifestation. But I guess if one can take grieving bereavement vision as body resurrection, the same person can see levitation where in fact there is none. So what yeah. can you, what can you uh, sure. about that. <laughs> well, the thing is, okay, so so let's say, for example, this this questioner, uh, mm. if I had recorded visually an exorcism, and in that exorcism, I showed bodily levitation, all right? What is to say that the, ves the levitation shown in the video is authentic and not simply a theatrical act like is yeah. done in a Hollywood movie? Mm. So recording an exorcism isn't going to be proof for anybody because with super with um, uh, visual effects, anything yeah. can be done. So that doesn't establish a single thing. Mm. And what it does do is it violates the victim's privacy. And, yeah. you know, the victim is afflicted. Uh, mm. The victim is held hostage. And even I've been asked by different entities that... You know, they, they've wanted to interview some of the victims. And, and and the answer is no, I won't even ask them. Because you, you have to understand, when someone is afflicted by evil, they're undergoing horrific tortures. Their freedom is curtailed. You know, they they might disappear for two days in, their, in the level of their consciousness, and then they come back and they find themselves eating feces on the floor or out of a toilet. Right. So that's their next conscious awareness. So two days ago, they were doing something. All of a sudden, they wake up. They've lost two days out of their lives. They're eating feces mm. and, and they're undergoing ho horrific tortures. They're experiencing torment. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, for, for me to ask a victim, hey, would you like to come on a show and talk about your torments? would be like asking someone who's been kidnapped and been tortured yeah. in the shack in the woods for years by someone Correct. and saying, hey, would you like to go back into that shack and talk about it? It's just, uh, I mean, you, you, you have to understand that that's not possible, right? That, 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 that would be horrifically painful for the victim, but also it could threaten the psychological state that they're in because they're they will be anybody who becomes possessed will carry deep scars from that possession from the for the rest of their lives they will not be the same wow thank you father and from uh yep yep pt 
a part of me thinks to myself, believing in this is insane. Uh, you never seen anything a close to supernatural and you are just going to believe this random people. And the other part of me is saying, but are these priests so bad in their dogmas that they would make this up? I think for the most part, if a priest has any true belief in God, he wouldn't dare to make up things like this and mislead and mislead people. Being a priest is a huge sacrifice and it's not apparent to me why a secret uh, atheist would waste his time when he could just live how he wants as an atheist under no authority. I'm so dubious but I believe it at the same time. Um, right. But can you comment about that, Father? Right. So look, so I am an exorcist. If mm. if I if I make it my business to start lying, I've entered into sin. Mm. And so, do you know what's going to happen to me when I face the devil, whom mm. I've through my moral action, whom I've accepted as my Lord, and I start commanding him in the name of a different Lord? Jesus Christ, he's going to come at me and attack me. And in, in fact, more than that, he's going to possess me. Oh, you know, the, the exorcist, in if he's in the state of sin, is always subject to possession himself. If he's in the state of sin, right? So it would be horrifically dangerous and imprudent if he were to come at the devil when he doesn't fully belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, so, is it really possible that the devil can also possess a priest? Absolutely. In fact, he typically wants to possess the priest more than the victim. The, the priest would be the Easter egg that he desires because now he takes away an agent of Jesus Christ and he mm. removes him out of the equation and, and, and that priest uh, stops being able to inflict damage upon the devil and his kingdom. It, it, it's in the, and it actually happened in the movie The Exorcist too, the first one, where, where the, oh, I, this was horribly bad, where where the priest commanded the demon to leave the victim and enter into himself. Well, you would never do this, because what you're doing is giving the devil a blank check. You're giving him a permission to enter into you. You're forging a relationship with him, and you are the author of that relationship. It's going to be horrifically difficult to get the de the devil out of you. Because, see, in the case of the victim, the victim may or may not have known that his or her action would forge a relationship with the devil. But mm. you, as the priest, in, in, in stating that to the devil and commanding him to enter into you, you know fully well what you're doing. And so it'll be much more difficult to get the demon out. And the, the legal contract you've made with the demon is one that has horrific consequences. Hmm. From uh, jo George, hi Father, can you give me a good prayer to say daily to protect myself? I'm getting back to my Catholic faith. Certainly. So you know what? That for for one's personal prayer, there's no, there's nothing better than the Rosary. Say the Rosary every day. The Mother yeah. of God has promised us so much oh, through the recitation of the Rosary. So make that a fundamental part of your day. Pray that every single day, and you will see its effects in your life. Hello mga ka -faith. short commercial lang. Kung sa tingin mo na na-bless at na-inspire ka sa content na pinapanood mo ngayon, dito sa vlog na pinapanood mo ngayon, dito sa interview na pinapanood mo ngayon, please consider supporting me in Patreon. Alam nyo mga ka -faith, when you support me in Patreon, ay matutulungan nyo ko na makapag-produce pa ng mga ganitong klaseng vlog at interview na alam ko na makakatulong sa inyong Catholic faith. Kasi itong ginagawa ko ay hindi po libre to Lahat to ay may cost. ba diba? Yung mga ginagamit ko sa editing, sa mga software, sa mga device na kailangan ko pang gamitin para mas mapaganda ko pa yung mga interview at content na gagawin ko. And through your help, through your support, ay mas matutulungan nyo ako na mas ma-improve lahat ng ginagawa natin dito sa ating online evangelization through your support in Patreon.
Ano nga ba ang Patreon? Alam nyo, pag kayo ay nag-decide na isupport ako sa Patreon, ay uh, bibigyan ko kayo ng exclusive content na galing sa akin na pwede nyo ma-access at also uh, exclusive content na mula din sa mga kilalang Catholic speaker at mga na-interview ko dito sa aking vlog na hindi ko ina-upload sa YouTube at ma-access nyo lang to dito sa Patreon. If you want to be part of my Patreon group, ilalagay ko yung link sa taas or sa baba ng video na to. Or dito sa mismong vlog na to, ilalagay ko yung details na yun kung paano ka pwedeng maging part ng aking Patreon group. Thank you so much. So pagpatuloy na natin yung pinapanood mo. God bless. Another question. Uh, I always want to know why the demons chose this person to possess. Right. So there's always mystery to that. Uh, there's always mystery. And uh, there, there are a number of parts that are relevant to that. So there's the desire of the demon. So some he will desire more than others. Some he may, he may have a contract with. He may have the legal right to possess, but he chooses not to possess uh, mm. for whatever reason. Why would he not? I don't know. I don't fully know that that would necessitate entering into the mind of the demons. Mm. But the, the other factor is that God has also to permit it. And sometimes he just doesn't permit it, even though the demon will have the contractually the, the relationship mm. he needs. The Lord does not allow the demon to ratify that relationship. Mm. Uh, and from Janet. Uh, to Father Martins, if someone is experiencing demonic oppression, uh, is one good confession enough for this person to get liberated without seeking help from an exorcist? Or is it necessary to find an exorcist first so the person who believes that he is demonically oppressed gets the proper assessment based on the last episode I listened to entitled Case 3 Spiritual Ru Roulette? Right. So that's a very good question. Always go to confession first. One confession is better than 1,000 exorcisms. And in fact, when you, when you undergo confession, you so, someone who has those demonic relationships established, you sever those relationships. So there's no exorcist needed at that point. So go to confession and then start living your Christian life. And allow time to go by even if you sense there's still some oppression in your in your life there's still evidence of demonic attachment live your christian life keep going to confession going to mass receiving communion you know if you fall into the state of sin again go go back to confession adopt a prayer life and you'll see that the devil's hold will begin to lessen dramatically um, and that that's the way, see, the sacraments are the ordinary ways in which God brings about sanctification in our lives. So allow those ordinary ways to take effect. If over time, over a long period of time, over several months, you find that there is not an improvement, then mm. go to the exorcist. And, and I, I say wait several months because, look, exorcists are horrifically busy. You know, there's more people coming at us than we can manage. So use the ordinary means of holiness. You don't have to run to an exorcist uh, simply because you sense the devil. Mm. Use what God has provided through his church. Use it. Allow some months to go by. If the problem is not clearing itself up, then then contact the exorcist. But but a uh, be merciful to that to the exorcists that are out there the few of us who are functioning and and do what you can in your own accord and see how the lord helps you through that before you go running to him wow and from regina good life brother adrian just a question how can we exorcise ourselves what prayer should use thank you yeah, so again, first and foremost, the sacraments, confession and mass. If you want the devil out of your life, but you're not going to mass every Sunday, then you're crazy. Mm. If, 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 if you want Jesus Christ in your life, 
if you want his benefits, then you need you need Christ. You need the benefactor. Mm. To get the benefits, you need the benefactor. And to get the benefactor, you need to do what he says. You need to be going to mass. You need to be going to confession whenever you have sin. Your soul needs to be clean. You need to have a prayer life. You need to be involved in your church. You need to get rid of the sin out of your life. Right? Get rid of it. All of it. You may mm. even have, if you have relationships in your life that are sinful, people mm. who, when you're around them, they bring you down to sin. Get rid of those relationships. Sever them from your life. Wow. Uh, from Cleopatra. Hi, Brother Adrian. Please ask Father Carlos. I have learned from exorcist priests that God doesn't allow to hurt the victim. But how about witches putting smell, spell or hexes on a person? Then some of the other victim dies. Yeah. So uh, that is not true. Uh, mm. the, the victim is always hurt by the activity of the devil. Always hurt. Uh, mm. Some of the hurts are temporary, but they're hurts nonetheless. Some mm. of them are long term. Uh, what is mm. not the case is God does not permit demons to kill the victim. Uh, so, so now he can he can tempt them. He, he the demon can can tempt the victim with thoughts of suicide. And if they're in the state of mortal sin, he was he will always tempt them to suicide, mm -hmm. because if they die in the state of mortal sin, the devil gains them for eternity. So that that's a very consistent and and common strategy of the devil. Ah, I see. Uh, from Kagi, Kagu, Kagura, Kagura. Uh, please ask if is if it is possible to have the the priest exercise the house that you do not own. For example, the rental houses or the owner of the house should make the request to the priest. Thank you. Yeah, a good question. So there, there's there's layers of relationship there. So if you are renting a house, then yeah you have made a legal contract with the owner to dwell there and make it your home. So for mm -hmm. legally speaking, right, as long as you're a rent payer, it is your home. So you have authority over the demons there. You can totally ask a, a priest to come and exercise the place. At the same time, let's say you're the owner and you've let in renters that are living a life that's incongruent with the Christian life you can you 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 are still the owner of the house so yes you can bring in an a, a, a priest and and do a blessing of the house and that will be ratified so so in a sense we're looking at a situation where there's two owners of the place uh, mm. but they're owning they're owners of it through different respects nevertheless through either respect a command can be given by which the demons have to follow Wow. And again from Kagira, Kagura, please ask uh, Father if it is true that Satan is afraid is afraid of the former Pope uh, Benedict XVI and then Pope John Paul II. Uh, in my videos, I am talking I am talking about that. If this is true, why are they afraid of the devil? Thank you. They lived holy lives and, and the devil was afraid of them. Mm. Um, so it it is true, and I've I've used Saint John Paul II's relics in exorcism, and the demon hates him. Oh. Uh, the, the demon, uh, even yeah, shortly after the, the Pope died, his uh. name was being invoked. This is long before he was beatified. His name was invoked by exorcists within exorcisms, and. And, and the devil reacted as if it were a saint being named. And, and that makes sense because the act of beatification and canonization on the part of the church adds nothing to a person's holiness. Uh, and that, that action doesn't make them to be a blessed or a saint. It is merely the recognition on behalf of the church, the official recognition that, hey, there's enough evidence that we can be certain that this individual here is is a blessed among the saints in heaven or is in fact a saint himself or herself mm. how about pope benedict the 16 have you tried also to ask 
uh, for his intercession. I have, and, and in fact, I I've used. I have a letter that he wrote, oh. uh, and I used that, and and it produced a visceral react reaction from the demon. Wow, what letter is is it, Father? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a Christmas letter that he wrote to somebody. Uh, this was in the 1980s. He was a cardinal then, and I right. was able to obtain it. So it's 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 my possession now, and I so I used it in an exorcism, and and I, I touched the 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 demoniac with it, and it produced uh, a visceral reaction from the demons. The demons felt uh, the 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 holiness in that letter as as a relic. Wow, it's good to hear that, Father. Uh, from Chinita Alva, Father Carlos, my dad has been a faith healer for more than 40 years. And my whole siblings tried our best to convince my dad to denounce it. Does it also affect us, his children, what he is doing now? Do we also carry the curse of the faith healer? Some of my siblings are seeing things in our house like fairy, fairy tales. Thank you for answering, Father Carlos. Sure. So I'm I'm not sure what is meant by faith healer, but I think what what's evident in the question is the fact that the the questioner, uh, so uh, Chinita, uh, the, who's writing the question, mm. understands it to be incompatible with the Christian way of life. So mm -hmm. given that as a supposition, so I, in other words, what, what her father is doing is something that is syncretistic. It's he's bringing in some, you know, bringing in matter of other religions into Christianity, or in fact, he's doing something pagan. So he's invoking yeah. uh, some power from the pagan realm. Either way, it's being sensed that this is incongruent with the Christian faith. And so, yeah, I, I I think if you are experiencing things in your home, then bring in a priest to exercise and bless your home. And and because it's in your father's life, it doesn't mean that it has to be in your life. There could be some spillover in your life, but you can take evasive actions by having uh, a priest come in and bless your home and, and uh, well, to exercise it and then bless it. The counterpart there, I think, Father, uh, the faith healer is like a shaman. A shaman, yeah. So, um, no, I, I don't think uh, I don't think that changes anything. So, in other words, the answer I gave is the correct one. That you, you, there's a power that's being invoked that is mm. is apart from Jesus Christ. So, uh, it's by the power of demons that he is he, he is operating. Mm. Thank you for clarification, Father. And from Kenneth. I'm a little late. What's your opinion on UFO? Uh, uh, I believe in Jesus and born and raised Catholic. My girlfriend and I, I experienced a, a few. Could, uh, could they be angels? Thank you and God bless. Yeah, so I that's a good question. And, mm. and, and um, the short answer is, I think UFOs don't... I, I, I think space aliens do not exist. There's no evidence they do exist. Although I, I do also think that these sightings of people are seeing in the skies and even of little gray beings or, or whatever, I think that those are actual sightings that they're seeing. But I do think they're manifestations of the devil. Because, look, until the space age, until we started to launch spacecraft, we didn't have any of these kind of sightings happening. Yeah. It's only in the dawn of the space age that all of a sudden we start having these claims of aliens, UFOs, space abductions, and that kind of thing. So I think it's just a straight demonic tactic. And in fact, a good, a very good friend of mine whom I trust, he's a convert to the faith. Uh, I know him very, very well. Uh, he had a sighting of, of a spacecraft in the sky. And it was enormous. It had, you know... Uh, it was lit up. Uh, I, I know that he's not lying when he tells me, yeah, I saw that. And he saw it zoom out of the sky so quickly. And th this thing would have been, 
this thing would have been half a kilometer long. It was enormous, enormous mm -hmm. over the sky, according to him. Mm -hmm. It disappeared. It, it flew off so quickly, so instantaneously that nothing, nothing man-made could have done, could have moved with, with such speed. So uh, I think what, what's happening there was, and, and he acknowledges this, he, he, this is what he believes, in fact, that the devil was giving him a sighting in order to make him doubt the Christian faith, which he did eventually enter, uh, and and he ended up giving his life to Christ. And um, the, the devil was simply trying to, to get him, um, to, to kind of confuse him and clog his belief system that, well, you know what, maybe Christianity is not the right worldview, maybe there's something else that is the truth. But he did, mm. thankfully, opt for the, the to join the christian faith and to believe in the worldview presented by the scriptures and by catholic tradition well thank you for that clarification father and from um marie it's true not being scared of parlor tricks uh, i moved into a house that started to have hauntings i heard people in the kitchen cooking i heard pots moving general noises I could see the kitchen from my room, but no one there. For some reason, I was unafraid and would ignore it and go to sleep. It happened four times, then stopped, but the tree in front of my window started thrashing back and forth. I just laughed. Uh, it never happened again. I felt also I had a protector around me. I've seen spirits for years as we as well can say that they were scary. They were all old and always smiling, but I'd scream as felt like uh, a intruder. I asked God to stop it and Mother Teresa appeared by my bed. She had been dead a year. She smiled, putting up a fence around my bed and disappeared. I realized later it was a symbol of protection as I never saw a spirit again for 10 years. I have many wonderful experiences. Too long to, to talk about all real wonderful. Why, why, is, why me? Some say I don't know. I'm no one great. What can you comment about this, Father? So, yeah. So, so th those manifestations may not have been demonic. They may have been souls living their purgatory. And in fact, if I if I had to guess, that's what I think it would be, that it would be a soul or souls undergoing their purgatory because the the individual, the questioner there was not terrified. If it's oh. if the cause is a demon, then there by definition, there's going to be terror because that's what demons do. Yes. So I think the fact that there that that something is being seen but it's not destructive there was nothing destructive mm -hmm. being done in the kitchen the tree yes it's shaking but it's not being destructive i think that may have been deceased souls who are undergoing their purgation who are in the state of purgatory and they're being allowed to ask for prayers is it like father carlos when we uh, suddenly we we dream of our relatives that have died before. It certainly could be, and and it wouldn't be imprudent to pray for them. And on the contrary, it would be very prudent to be a very good thing to pray for them. And and even if, let's say, for example, they don't need it. Let's say your uncle Charlie appears in a dream, and yes. um, you know you start praying for him. Um, well, let's say he already happens to be in heaven, so so that you know he really doesn't need your prayers, although. You, although you've been praying for him, in those cases, God takes those prayers and he applies them to souls that do need them. So you, you can't lose. Wow. That, that energy is not wasted. Nice. Thank you for infor for that information, Father. And from Certainly. Jenny, G Jeannie, why does God need relics to manifest miracles and or petition of prayers? Well, God doesn't need them. God can do anything he wants and he's all powerful. So he doesn't need them. The, the, a, a different way to phrase that question is why would, why would he desire the use of relics? Why would he desire petitions? Well, because 
in the case of relics, they belong to his saints and God is a proud father. He's very proud of his saints. And mm -hmm. like a proud father, he likes to draw attention to them. He, 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 he's not, he's not jealous of his children, just like, you know, mm -hmm. yourself, Adrian, you know, you, 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 you and your wife, you've had children and, and yeah. you, any praise that's given to a child of yours doesn't take anything away from you on the, on the contrary. In fact, praise given to your child makes you feel good. In fact, it makes you feel better than if the praise was directed to you personally. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the dynamic. So God, God listens to his saints because he's a proud parent. And in, in, for us petitioning the saints or petitioning God uh, directly, why does God want us to, to function like that? Well, because that's forging a relationship with God. Uh, that 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 keeps us focused that we are the creature and he is the creator. That he is God. And Amen. so he has rights that we don't have. Yes. And so uh, if we don't surrender our petitions to God and keep praying mm -hmm. them and keep surrendering them, we can fall into the horrible lie, the disbelief that the devil lives we we can fall into the belief that we are god and that god himself is here to serve us which is crazy which is abhorrent so he has to keep us in need of him and if he doesn't then god himself is doing us a disservice by allowing us to believe a lie wow and from stinginet uh why does god always why does god always always say yes when we want to commit evil but when we pray for help so we can live virtuously, he always says no. Why it does he care more about evil than good? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, I think what's implied in that question is utter nonsense. He doesn't always say no uh, to the good and always say yes to the evil. So that, uh, that look, mm -hmm. your choice to do evil, that's your choice. You're the one yeah. to blame for that, not God. Uh, for you to live a virtuous life, well, that takes work. And so yeah. you may just want to snap your fingers and say, well, okay, God, make me virtuous. And when it doesn't happen in one second, then you start blaming God. That's mm. as stupid as saying, well, look, I'm hungry. I feel like having a nice roast pig dinner and having a des beautiful dessert after and lots of drink, snap my finger and hey, it doesn't <laughs> appear in front of me. So I, all of a sudden, I, you know, I'm just going to blame God for that. Yeah. that that's, a, that's stupid nonsense. Thank you, Father. That, that's a question rooted in immaturity. Mm. Yeah. And from Alex de los Reyes. Hi, brother. Just to settle once and for all. The Filipinos believe in different kinds of spirits and uh, mythical creatures such as duende, elves, encanto, enchantresses, maligno, malevolent spirits, tikbalang, horse, with many hybrid cre creatures. The media has even portrayed that some of these creatures are real and some of them are even good spirits. Time and time again, albularios, faith healers, it's like shaman, are called to combat bad spirits like these creatures. So are all of this of the de devil are are or 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 are they figures of imagination? Right. So I think those when they're within a culture, those kind of cultural expressions, those that that mythological presence within a culture, mm. those are favorite manifestations of the devil. Uh, ah. because it introduces a confusion there it affirms a reality that is contradictory to the reality presented by the christian faith by by the judeo-christian religion mm. um, so when if those apparitions are genuine apparitions and not say an expression of mental illness absolutely those are manifestations of the devil the the the, mm. the the spirit of uh, the, the liar, the, li the 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 great lying spirit. And again, from Alex, I am currently listening to to the Exorcist files, and there was an episode about Far Father Martin's asking the demon about its purpose for creation. 
With the light of the Holy Spirit, it was revealed that the demon was supposed to be a dowry to the blessed uh, Saint Joseph. Does this mean that uh, that man's faults has been known by God even before the creation of the world and that Jesus' incarnation was inevitable? Well, uh, so certainly... Uh, man's fall was known by God even before the creation of the world because God knows the future. You know, yeah. time is a creature. It's a creation. Mm. And, and so God is not bound by a creature that he makes. God is, is outside of time. He's not bound by time. Uh, so whether the, I do, the, the incarnation was not inevitable because that implies that God had no freedom with regard to his choice to incarnate himself. Yeah. But he certainly knew from all eternity what we experience through time and all of the events that occur within time. So, Father, another question. Uh, is tattoos are portals to hell? Tattoos, uh, portals mm -hmm. to hell. You know, I th there's no simple answer to that. It depends on what the tattoo is of. And, mm. and it depends what the motivation is to get a tattoo. But I will say this, that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And Paul is very clear in the scriptures. Your body does not belong to you. Mm. It does not belong. It's been purchased at, at a price. So mm. glorify God in your bodies is what Paul says. So to mark your body in a permanent way is it it can be the case or it, it the underlying motive can be certainly a dissatisfaction with the gift that god has given and that has spiritual implications wow just like people who are gender confused and they decide yeah. one day you know i want to be a different gender and that mm -hmm. so, that's a recipe for poor mental health because we're rejecting reality. And the reality is that God has given you a gift. If you reject that gift from the Lord, there are implications of that. And that implication is, is, is going to manifest itself in your life. Oh, wow. So, so the motive in you might be nothing evil per se, but within your motives, there, there could be a dimension that gives evil access to your life because you are proclaiming a dissatisfaction with your, the gift that God has given you and, it, and revealing a belief that he gave you something which is less good than what you can make it. Having tattoos, did they commit sin, Father Carlos? It, it depends. It, again, it, it depends on what their motives were. Depends on what they're getting tattooed. But I would caution people. I would recommend against tattoos. So first of all, these are decisions that young people tend to make. Yeah. Uh, when you get older, have you ever seen what a tattoo looks like on an old person? They, they look disgusting. They look hideous. <laughs> so you're yeah. marking your body forever. Uh, and the gl the glory, the beauty, if there is any beauty, which I don't find there's a beauty in them, but you, the beauty is temporary, you know. And and you're you're for the rest of your life, you're going to be carrying the implication of that decision. To me, the glory of God is manifested on a clean body that glorifies God. There's mm -hmm. a beauty to that that you man you. And, and look, and tattoo, this is a fad. This is a fad thing. And, and there's going to, there are people, a great number of people that regret tattooing their bodies. I meet those people all the time. Thank you, Father, for uh, patiently answering all our questions. And what should our viewers look forward uh, in the upcoming episode of The Exorcist Files? Yeah, so the, 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 the next episode is going to be all about a house infestation and how that came about. Uh, mm. So I think your viewers will find it very interesting. This is going to, this is, this will be the longest episode that we've had thus far. Oh. Any last word, Father, before we ask you for 
a prayer and a blessing? Yeah, I would just emphasize the fact that you know we we in our human in our time that we have on this earth we want to forge as close a relationship to God as we can and and avoid having any kind of relationship with the devil the sacraments and prayer are are the way to establish uh, that which we need in terms of God and and to sever that which we don't need from the devil and so i bless you now adrian and i bless uh, your family members your listeners your viewers and all those whom uh, are loved by 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 all of you the father mm-hmm. the son and the holy spirit and i invoke upon you the presence of the blessed virgin mary may she obtain from the lord all the grace that you need the father the son and the holy spirit amen amen thank you so much uh, to this opportunity to have you again in our show We will always continue to pray for you, for your ministry. I Thank know you very it's... much, Jan. ExorcistFiles.tv is the website through which people can find out how to subscribe to that podcast. Yeah, and hope to see you again. God bless. God bless. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Brother, actually, napanood ko yung isa sa mga talk mo nun. Uh, parang may nabanggit ka nun na parang you are, you are still young as a preacher. Parang uh, na, na-share mo na nagkaroon ka ng experience na makipag-debate sa isang pinalang leader sa ibang religion. Totoo. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Para magkaroon ka ng access sa content na ito, be part of my Patreon group at i-click mo lang ang gold membership. Ma-access mo na ang buong video talk na ito. Alam mo ba na pag ikaw ay naging part ng aking Patreon group ay matutulungan mo ako makapag-produce pa ng mga high quality content na katulad ng pinapanood mo ngayon at sobrang makakatulong ito sa ating online evangelization dito sa ministry na ginagawa natin para mas ma-empower nyo kung makapag-produce ng mas marami pang content na alam ko na makakatulong sa inyong pananampalatayang katoliko. Thank you and God bless. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope na na-bless at na-inspire ka dito sa aking vlog. Make sure na i-like mo at mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to. At mag-subscribe ka sa aking YouTube channel para lagi ka updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. At huwag mo din kakalimutan na i-like ang aking page. So this been Adrian Milag encouraging you to live your life to the fullest. God bless you more abundantly.